right? Here's a gel, all right? This represents a DNA sample from Emma, and this is the DNA sample from the laptop here. I've used restriction enzyme to cut the DNA into fragments. So I got her sample, I got the sample from the laptop. Right here I have what are known as DNA size standards, I'll talk about that in a second. And right here I have a clump of DNA strands that are known as the DNA ladder. So I turn on the electricity, it creates a positive end. This arrow shows you that these, all these fragments of DNA are being attracted to the positive end of the plate. So after about an hour, time's up, we see what the results are. This is Emma's DNA. The tallest ones only moved a little bit because they're kind of slow. The medium size a little further, the shorter further, and the littlest one went the furthest at <coughs> all because they're really fast. Now notice over here in the DNA I got off the computer, not only are the bands in different places, right? Here, this one's gone farther than this one. The bands are in different places, but there are more pipe cleaners in different <coughs> bands than over here. To identify someone's DNA fingerprint, you're looking for the number of bands, the number of pipe cleaners in each band, because those are going to show up visually, and the uh, size of the bands. For example, this pipe cleaner here is a DNA size standard. It says 1,200 base pairs, that's DNA letters, in length. This one said 800 base pairs in length. I put the DNA size standards into the machine so that I could determine by estimation how big these are or how big these are. These are halfway between the 800 and the 1200 standard, so you might conclude that the average size of these fragments is about a 1000. These went further than the 800, and based on how much further you could conclude that these maybe have a size of about 600. Whereas these didn't go as far as the 1200, so maybe they're like 1400. So those three things help determine your DNA fingerprint. Now, this is called the DNA ladder. It's like a visual boundary. It's like a fence. Separate this sample from this sample so you don't get too confused. This is just junk DNA that means nothing other than a visual boundary. Notice that the sample I got off the laptop does not match Emma's sample. So Emma is not a suspect in this crime. You mean you like got it off the laptop like physically? Yeah, with a swab. Oh, you know. like the you DNA meant, from the person. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I that was you using meant, my like, laptop. The, like like laptop you like googled it or DNA. something. Why, why do we need this? Okay, let's say Emma's DNA matched the DNA I got off the computer. I'd have her arrested. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's why I would need Oh, wait, it. is that what, like, police do? Yeah. Like, that's, like, fingerprints. Fing forensics, exactly. Uh, dude, that seems They're so going around with their cotton swabs. And <laughs> you don't need but a tiny speck. The DNA on the end of one hair follicle is enough to convict someone or uh, acquit someone in a crime. So, so like, what, what, I don't understand, like, the, all this. Like, why it gets smaller and why it gets bigger. Well, we start out, they're all in one place. Okay. They end up in different places. The small ones swim faster toward the positive end of the plate than the big ones. Why is that? They're like, you You run faster than me because you're smaller than me. Quick little guy, right? Yeah. Before I do this project. So I'm just going to show you how it works. I take the DNA from Emma. I put it in one hole, and then I got the DNA from the computer in another hole. I put this gel in the chamber. I add a buffer solution that acts as an electrolyte, it conducts electricity, because this chamber is going to be electrified with a power source. And the way it works is this lid has uh, electrical probes hooked to it. And when I hooked it like this and turned this thing on, electricity is now flowing through <coughs> the gel and through the solution. Now this end is a positive end and this end is a negative end. DNA starts out up here. DNA fragments are negatively charged and they are attracted to the positive end of the chamber. So over a period of about an hour, each of the DNA fragments are gonna start swimming through the gel in slow motion, heading toward the positive end. And I don't move, stop, careful. 
<laughs> All right, we have some DNA from Ellie that's on the end of her hair. Before we put this in there, I need a piece of DNA. Hey, come Mary, on, come here. Come on, Mary, put your DNA in. No. Yes, you Just don't move. Why don't you touch that and see if it's on, James? Oh. <laughs> Just touch that, see if it's on. No, James, don't do it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess it's on me.